everybody. I am so glad you joined me again to make a Thanksgiving themed craft today. And we enjoyed our story Thanksgiving at the Table Tins by Eileen Spinelli. And so whether you're having turkey for Thanksgiving Day or if you're having sandwiches or pizza or whatever you're having, you can make a fun family craft with your family as well. And at the library, at her Memorial Library in Mifflinburg, Pennsylvania, we have a couple craft kits available for you to take home in preparation for the holiday. Or you can make this for things that you have available at your home. The first one we have is a family's coloring book. And um, this is something that we printed off the internet. We got it at teachingmama.org. And it comes in sheets of paper like this. And they're all black and white like this. And you can color them. And then you can cut them in half and staple them together and you have a little book. So that'd be kind of a fun idea that you can all do together as a family. And then we have something that's a little bit more labor intensive. And here we've made like a windsock kind of Thanksgiving um, handprint craft. And everybody in the family can trace out their hand and write what they're thankful for this year for Thanksgiving. And you can hang this um, either um, in front of a window if you live in a warmer area or above your heater in a colder area and it will blow the, the hands and the leaves around and it'll look very fall and festive and it's all about Thanksgiving. So let me go ahead and show you how to make this craft. If you can't make it into the library to pick up a craft kit, um, you can simply go online and if you just Google um, Thanksgiving posters, there are about a million different ideas and this is just the one that we picked and we printed it off on cardstock paper. And you can do this at home too with your computer printer and heavier paper. Um, if you don't have cardstock, regular paper is fine, but the heavier paper gives it um, a nice, firmer, long-lasting shape. Then you're also going to need um, some construction paper. Um, you're going to need a sheet of red and a sheet of yellow or whatever colors you prefer. And then you're going to need more construction paper so that you can trace everybody's hand in your house. And we have a lot of people in my household, so there's a lot of hands that we had to trace. Um, but perhaps in your household, maybe there's not quite so many, so you'd only need a few. Um, the sample we're going to do today is of Larry and Caesar. So we only have um, a handprint for Caesar, and, or I mean for Larry, and we have a paw print for Caesar, and we have a handprint for me. So that's what we'll do for our sample. Um, so the first step, and then the other thing that you're going to need is from the library, we printed off templates of um, colored leaves. And again, if you don't, if you can't make it in the library, just cut out some leaves out of the construction paper that you have left over because we're going to tie those on. You're going to need some ribbon or yarn. It doesn't matter which one you choose. You're going to need a hole punch, pencil, scissors, um, markers for writing. Um, you're going to need a glue stick. And I like the packaging tape um, to secure it all together. Scotch tape will work if that's all you have, but the packaging tape is a little bit firmer and will hold better. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to create the actual um, wind sock itself. And to do that, we're going to glue our um, poster here, our Thanksgiving poster, to our red square of construction paper. This is why we recommend a glue stick because a glue, um, regular glue, um, will bubble and will pop up through. So just run your glue stick over the construction paper a few times and then adhere your poster to it. You want to make sure you get it nice and centered. And then just smooth it out really good. Make sure it gets on there good. You might want to make sure that your edges are good and secured. And we'll do this edge also. When I did my first one, I didn't do that, and then they popped back up. So you make sure that your edges are secured good. Now, you can leave it at just this if you like. Um, we did a double edge one to give it a little bit more height and to make it pop a little bit more. In order to do that, you want to take your second sheet of construction paper. And just like we did the first one, you're going to put glue all over it. And I'm running out. Here we go. And then, but this time, instead of centering it, this time we're going to go off center. And it'll work out okay, don't panic. Um, you wanna go off center just a little bit so that you get this edging around the top of your poster. So you see how you've got about a quarter of a half an inch of an edge showing here around the top and the side. 
And then you just want to again make sure you push that down all really good. And then flip it over. So this is what it will look like on the back side. Your red and your yellow slightly off center from each other. Then you want to start rolling. And again, if you're using the cardstock, that paper is going to be a little bit stiffer. So you're really going to have to work it good and let it roll, unwrap, roll it again, because we really want to give it that, that paper a memory of being folded. It'll hold better if you keep working it like that. And one more time, just to really give it some of that rolled effect feeling. So now it will almost stand up on its own like a cylinder. And this is where the tape comes in. You're going to want to take enough tape for the entire length of the, the side of the paper here. And we'll put that right here. Set it off to one side or have somebody help you do that. And then you want to pull these together so that the red overlaps with each other. Just like so. And you're going to kind of need to squish it down a little bit. And then you're going to want to take your tape and uh, secure it to your edge. Uh, okay, maybe we'll try it this way. Oops. And try not to get the tape to stick to each other. That's no fun. Okay, so we'll try this again. Again, you want to do the red on top of the red. If it helps, put a little piece of scotch tape to secure it, you can. And as you can see, my glue did not hold. So we're going to put more glue on here to secure it and run that tight. Okay. That's okay. It will hold once the tape is on. Okay, so now we're gonna put our tape on here and secure it all the way. And put your tape on here this way. Don't, don't make sure you, if you, if you do it on one end, don't, Put it down too hard because you got to be able to get the other ends in there. That's why I said sometimes if you want to use scotch tape to give it an initial cover, that works too. And then you just push it down to secure it tight and fold your edges over. And if you notice it's a little crooked, gently pull it back up because you haven't really secured it yet. And you can straighten that out a little bit. Make it nice and straight. And then you can push it back down again. And then once you've got it where you want it, slide your fingers on the inside of the cylinder and hold it fast. And then you're going to want to take some more tape. You want to tape it on the inside for that fold as well. That'll help hold it. And just push it down on the inside of your cylinder as well. Okay, we're going to pause this a minute so I can go get some scotch tape. Okay, so we had a breakdown. I get my scotch tape and we taped the edges here to hold it in place, made it a little bit easier to work with. So if you're working by yourself, I do recommend that. Um, but if you have someone who can help you, then you don't necessarily need the scotch tape. Just take your, um, your packaging tape then and cover the edges here like this and close it at the top and cover the edges down here also at the bottom and then lay it flat and rub your hands on the inside. You can secure it really tight and that will hold your seals nice together to keep your poster edges down and keeps it all nice and secured. And there you have your lovely little cylinder. So sorry about that. I do recommend if you're doing it with, with just yourself that you use the scotch tape. But if you have a partner, you don't necessarily need that. So now the next part of it is where you have to have everybody else in the family go ahead and draw their handprints out. So you just need a piece of construction paper, like a half sheet and a pencil and just have them trace their hand along the paper like so. And then when you get it all traced out, um, then what I do with my family is I wrote their name at the top so that I knew who they were. And then we went through and we cut them all out with scissors. And when they were all done, then you can have people write things that they're thankful for with a marker. So maybe you could say on here that I am thankful for, I am thankful for the library. 
because I am. I love our library. For the library. And maybe like, maybe Caesar would be thankful for pizza and maybe Larry would be thankful for soup. Or maybe Larry would be thankful for Caesar and Caesar would be thankful for Larry. Um, all kinds of things to be thankful for. But have your family member write what it is that they're thankful for and then they can write their name on the thumb so we know who it is. And then make sure you have all your leaves cut out and you're going to end up making a pattern. And for our sample here, um, what we did was we have an orange leaf and then a handprint and then a green leaf. And with Larry's, we did uh, orange leaf and uh, Larry's handprint and a yellow leaf. And I'll show you how to put this together with Caesar. We have Caesar's paw print and we have a yellow leaf and a red leaf. So what we need to do is take our hole punch. You want to punch a hole in the base of the leaf like this. And you want to punch a hole in the base of the hand print or in this case the paw print. And then you want to punch a hole in the base of this leaf as well. So try to use lots of different colors so you can have all kinds of patterns. And then you should have about a yard of string for each um, each segment that you want to hang below your um, your windsock. So um, at the bottom, you want to put them in order, thread them in order. So we're going to do red, and then we're going to do green, and then we're going to do yellow. And when you have your last leaf on, simply make a knot with the string. Easy peasy. For kids that are learning how to tie, this is a great opportunity to practice that tying skills. You want just a basic string. Then, using your hand print, or your in this case our paw print, you want to leave about an inch and a half or an inch of space between each um, leaf and hand print on your segment. And so in order to do that then, you kind of want to pull your, your paw print up, kind of judge where you're at, and then same thing here, you're going to tie a knot. Now, uh, my family is one, we had a lot of, a lot of um, leaves and handprints on our segments. And it gets a little harder the more you add. So make sure that you don't tie your things too loosely so that if you need to go back and adjust, you can. See, that's a little too close. So we can loosen up the string here a minute, the ribbon. And we can um, pull a little bit more ribbon through so that we've got more distance between the paw print and the leaf. And then when you have it where you like, then you can pull it a little bit tighter. I think we could probably come a little bit farther down here now and then tie it tight. And the same thing with the top one then, we can just go ahead and figure out where that's at and tie a knot around that. When you have all of them in place, this one's still a little too far up, so we're going to move him farther down too. A lot of this is going to be trial and error and it's going to depend on how many um, items you put on each string too. Um, and I will also say that using yarn is a little bit easier than using the ribbon. The ribbon, especially the curling ribbon, it likes to curl in on itself and it can get a little frustrating to work with sometimes. All right, so when you have it all pieced together like so, then take your other pieces and make sure that they're all about the same length. So you wanna put your, your top pieces all together because when we attach them on the inside, they've all got to kind of hang at the same length, more or less. And this one is also up here. And so we can kind of judge from the top and see where they fall. It looks like our Caesar one is a little bit long. So we will shorten him a little bit. Maybe we'll shorten him by a couple inches. That looks good. So we're going to trim off a little bit of the top here. Now we're going to take our tube and you're going to have to put tape on the inside in three areas. Think of it as a triangle. So you're going to want to put one here and one here and one down here. So again, you can use scotch tape. You can use the, um, the packaging tape, whichever you prefer. Um, I don't recommend glue for this because it just takes too long to dry um, unless you're using a hot glue, but we don't want to have kids do that either. So then you just want to take your tape, adhere it to the string that you have. 
Um, if you want to put two pieces on, just to make sure that if it's outside in the wind, it doesn't blow away, that'd probably be a good idea. And then you just want to place it inside your um, your wind sock. Oops, I got it caught in my arm here. And you kind of want to figure out how low you want it to hang. So you might want to hang it further towards the top, the top center of it, or trim your string and you can adhere it towards the bottom. It's entirely up to you what you want to do. And then we're going to take our next segment here. And there it is. And this time we'll rotate so that we can put this all the way towards the top up here. And once more, we have to do Larry's yet. So we recommend only three segments because otherwise it's going to get to be really um, messy and twisted in there. But if you have a really, really, really big family, um, you can do as many segments as you'd like. And that's in there. And that's how they all hang. Isn't that kind of cool? And last but not least, you need to cut a piece of string um, that is going to be about, um, here it is, that's going to be um, about uh, five, six inches long. And you want to hole punch the top of your um, poster here. And on the opposite side, exactly the same way. And then you're going to want to tie your string or your ribbon through that hole too. And you want to just do it again a simple knot so your kids will get really good at knotting here. And on this side as well. Thread it through the hole. And tie a simple knot. And there you have it. You have your nice little own Thanksgiving Day windsock with all the things that everybody in your family is thankful for. So we hope that you enjoyed our crafts for this project today and that you enjoyed our story about Thanksgiving with the Tapletons. And of course, we hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We'll see you again later. Bye!